Welcome to the top video game podcast of the week from HorribleNight.com. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Welcoming this evening, Justin Gifford. What's up, Justin? Hey, guys. I also like saying Justin as much as possible when I'm not talking to myself because it's a little weird. <laughs> and I also want to call out that we are, have the same name tag now. I don't think I, I think I did like J Devil and Gift Tour the last time you were on. Uh, I could yeah. be wrong, but seeing Justin twice is just funny. So I wanted to call that out for the audience before they like uh, made a face at me. So uh, somebody called me Jason today. Oh again. God! You yes, that is an I, epidemic. That I was is, just. I, I don't understand. The, I've met one guy named Jason. But no, that's not true. JPT. So I know two mm-hmm. now. Uh, but I just, I completely don't understand. I know a, a half a dozen Justins. Now I know two Jasons, and apparently... I, I feel uh, like we're mar- more more populous at this point than... Yeah. I feel like when we were little, like, Jasons were more... Apparent. We were kind of like a new trendy name. I don't know where yours came from, but mine was apparently based off a of general hospital. Uh, my mom likes to say that it was because I was just in time at the hospital, but <laughs> um, I think she's just being cute. So uh, my dad's a lawyer, and the or since the origin of our name is the first codifier of law uh, <laughs> in the Roman Empire, uh, came from that, and the fact that Justin Hayward is the lead singer of the Moody Blues. My okay. parents like a lot. All right, so. <laughs> That, that's that's where my version comes from. I think it. Uh, they're saying in chat. I think it does work both ways. I think Jasons do get called Justin as well. But uh, fuck Jasons. But yeah, fuck Jasons. If, uh, Except for JPT. You know, if I was to ever form a uh, ridiculous group on Facebook, it would be called Fuck Jasons. And then it would, never mind. That would go in a weird place. Okay. Well, so what else is what else has been going <laughs> going on before we get to the games? Uh. So okay. Uh, as you know, here in the Midwest, we really did not have much rain this summer because summer uh, didn't have to mow my lawn except for the spot that was covered by the uh, sprinkler for my garden yeah. for I don't know two months. Basically, it's like you'd walk the mower over the grass, but it really wouldn't cut yeah, anything. Yeah, I had a good six-week break there. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of nice. Um, and I've got the push mower. I think I, I think you know that that doesn't oh, have yeah. motor. It's just a rotary <laughs> thing. Which is fine. It's quiet. You can listen to Masochist. podcasts, no problem. <laughs> eh, it's all right. It's only like a half an acre. But um, so, you know, it's fall. We're, we're starting to get some rain. And the problem is we've had quite a bit of rain, sort of, suddenly, and then beautiful weather during the week with the uh, time change, or not the time change, but the, the sun going down. There's a lot less daylight, so I can't do it after work. Yep. So. Tomorrow, assuming it doesn't rain, which it may do. Seriously? I've got, I was also, yeah. I'm sp- yeah, I'm yeah I've got a, a, a jungle to mow. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little pissed about that. But uh, Nerd Poker has become my uh, go-to show when I'm mowing the lawn. Oh, yeah. I um, I usually listen to metal when I mow. I can't. I don't always guarantee I can hear the lyrics. Like, so I don't, And I won't do podcasts for the same reason. Just the volume level. I can't get it high enough uh yeah but uh i usually rob zombie is my go-to playlist for mowing the grass mm. and it has been since i was like 14 <laughs> so I, I i i guess i stick with my lawn mowing soundtrack so i, I had a hiatus on lawn mowing from uh about well almost my entire life my parents tore out all the grass they put a pool in the back and tore out all the grass in the front and put down like the the euonymus ivy that grows like this tall, so there was nothing to mow. Hmm. Uh, and I finally buy a house and I buy a push mower, and so I can listen to podcasts with the quiet mower. Nice. Uh, it's kind of nice. I didn't think about that. Um, other than that, uh, well, you know, environmental attorney too, because the the uh, mowers uh, are not they don't have catalytic converters, so they're giant polluters. Um. Other than that, you know, uh, sort of same old, same old, other than Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I am completely in love with. Yeah. And is, I, I, I love it. I, uh, I haven't seen the episode from this week. Really liked the first episode. Fell asleep during the second episode. But which, it, if I remember right, you said it wasn't a comment on the show. You were just tired. I, but I don't fall asleep during shows. Uh, it just, but it didn't. Uh. Like, I don't know. I've been watching some other new shows. Um, and you, it does, it takes them about three to kind of set their 
set everything in play to how the show's going to work. So I, I have not given up on this show by any means, but, but uh, what do you like so much about it? Um, I think partly Joss Whedon's back on the air. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes yeah. me happy. I mean, like he's his actors. You, the stable is already starting to show up. <laughs> um, on top of that, it it's well written. I know that there's going to be a doomed love interest because reference Joss Whedon. Um, and on top of that, you, you know, I, I love. I, Marvel has just done a badass job. Mm-hmm. You know, without Christopher Nolan, DC has done shit with their property <laughs> since Christopher Reeve was still alive. It's well, pretty, pretty not accurate. since he was people, alive, but since like 1982. Although, so, although people will argue like Smallville and some of their TV ventures have been a little bit more successful than I mean, Marvel really hasn't tried, but right. D, um, like Arrow, I like Arrow. Yeah, uh, I, I enjoyed Smallville. Uh, there were some things that drove me absolutely batshit about Smallville, but that's neither here nor there. I, I think I'm excited to see. Marvel, who's done great stuff in movie, trying to bring it to the small screen. Mm-hmm. I will be interested to see if they actually pull it off without kind of screwing the pooch. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's just nice though on the Joss Whedon side just to to know he's back on the air and also has like a ton of support. Like yes, you know, not Fox. Yeah, there <laughs> ABC and Marvel are going to try are going to try to make this show work no matter kind of what happens. So. It won't yeah. just be abandoned after twelve episodes. And like I said, I, I was I was actually I wrote a Sleepy Hollow review for Pure Geekery and related that show's on Fox. And I was like, I just don't want to get Firefly again. But it's good to know that Josh Whedon isn't going to get Firefly. So, right, yeah. And, and uh, having read that uh, review, I I need to, I, I guess Hulu maybe. I don't yeah, know Hulu has it. it is. That's where we've been watching. Okay. It. Yeah. All right, I'll have to go back and catch the first two episodes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I really like the pilot of that one, and uh, um, so I've been binge binge watching The Killing after talking to Cole quite a bit. He's been pop- propping that show up. I uh, this, this is Kevin Bacon. No, the, I forget the name of that. No, no, no. This is very much kind of like a modern day. Wow, what was the name of the? What's the show in the Northwest that Alan Wake was kind of like? Um, Twin Peaks. Is it Twin Peaks? Is that the murder show? Twin Peaks was the sort of sci-fi show. I think it's Twin Peaks. Uh, it was kind of lost, but it was in like anyway, 1985 or something. The whole show, it's a serial live show, 12, 13 episode seasons, uh, just about one murder, at least. That's how it starts. It just And the, it goes, day, each episode is a day, and it just goes yeah. into that, that murder investigation. Really, really serious tone, kind of dry. I don't really, I didn't really like a lot of the characters, and so this is my third attempt to watch the show, but I got hooked at about season episode okay. three or four. So I finished the first season, um, which I think this season, I think this show has three seasons done and the fourth one's upcoming. Um, so I know that it's going to stick around. So I want to stick with it. Um, and it does get better as it goes on. And, um, okay. but I remember at the end of season one, like the internet, like all the fans were kind of pissed off at how, how that ended. So I kind of got to experience that and be like, I kind of laughed at, knowing where they were going with it. But um, the, what I really wanted to say about the show, it's a great show, great drama. Uh, like I said, really, really serious and kind of dry. So I, I would recommend having other comedies to watch during this, but it's it's good for what it is. But I we've also been watching a ton of uh, Law & Order SVU. Megan's been going through all those episodes on uh, Netflix no, and Hulu. Talk and, about shit I'd need a break from. <laughs> <laughs> but, but after, like, you know, watching all the, like, the crime dramas out there and the formulas that all those shows have, you know, where they have one case per episode and they solve it in, in one episode. Yeah. Stretch out one of those episodes to a full season of a show. And what it becomes is you're watching, you're watching the worst cops in America try to solve something because every episode has to have tension and drama. So they keep like catching the wrong suspect and things just fall apart. <laughs> So it turns into a comedy. I, like in in some regard, I was like these these guys are just like this is actually probably a more accurate representation. But they keep fucking up for the sake of drama and the story. And um, it it's just I never thought about stretching that formula out. It, it makes it a completely different show. But uh, um, 
but it's it's really well written as far as when things start coming back together. But it was just I was just I was just thinking about this like these are they are just terrible. They just keep messing up every other episode, and more drama spills out from it. And uh, uh, but uh, it's 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 pretty it's it's a pretty good show. So all right, that is. I don't know if that's no. It's on uh, Netflix, so it's definitely you can you can stream at least the first two seasons uh, without. I know we just we just started our third season of Veronica Mars in anticipation of the movie coming out because, as I think you're aware, I uh, uh, maybe over enthusiastically Kickstarter backed that one. <laughs> uh, I got the pass because Carrie really likes the show, but uh, two hundred and. Twenty-five dollars. Oh, I was gonna say a little I, too much to back that. I was gonna say I'm I, gonna get a really cool freaking poster though. I got really anxious with the. Uh, we're excited about the Mighty Number no. Nine, uh, Kickstarter, the Mega Man guys, and I thought right. I, I thought I maybe redeemed you by spending more money, but no, I was just a little bit less. So. Um, yeah, I, I am gonna have a movie poster signed by the cast. So. <laughs> uh, PF has put up a poll for what I'm going to play after the show. I rallied off a bunch <laughs> of games that are, are potential. So. Let's get to the video games. This is an interactive podcast where we post uh, questions of the week on our Facebook page every week before the show, and we go over your answers as well as our own. Uh, so, Gifford, what's your game of the week? Uh, it's the game of a couple weeks um, because it's Bioware. <laughs> um, I think two weeks ago... They had a they had Dragon Age Origins on sale for I don't know twelve bucks or something and uh, oh yeah in case anybody doesn't know it's it's official now I'm gonna be a dad yay yeah so you did it. there's that I did, did it. I did it um so there's there's some saving and uh, extra budgeting going on stuff like that yeah um kids are expensive so hey. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear too. Especially since we got to buy a new car, um, can't fit the dogs, two adults, and a baby <laughs> in uh, either one of my it's car or Carrie's. Train one of yeah. the dogs to drive while you're at it. That should help. I, you know what? They're smart enough. They might be able to pull it off. <laughs> um, so anyway, twelve dollar gain. It's going to eat up a whole bunch of time. Sure. Hell yeah, let's go for it. Um, so I kind of got into that. Uh, it, it, well. I say I kind of got into it. It <laughs> took me a while to get into. Yeah. Um, it just it's so different. Uh, I, I think it's probably better suited for PC. Um, <laughs> or or may not better suited. It just took a lot of adjustment. It's much more in the older version of Bioware, mm-hmm. uh, like uh, Jedi Knight or not Jedi Knight. Uh, nice, the Old Republic too. Mm-hmm. Much more, you know, RPG heavy. Which I like, but I had gotten used to this iteration with Bioware where you start out with Mass Effect, you go to Mass Effect 2, and they become more action-y, you go to Mass Effect 3, and they slide back a little way towards RPG, but it's still pretty action-y. Uh, th- there's really none of that in um, Dragon Age Origins. It's straight-up rolls and pits. Um, I- I'm enjoying it. I- I'm not sure how... Um, much, or how well I like the uh, the interaction versus what you get in the Mass Effect games. Uh, as far as in like terms the characters romance, and story stuff, yeah, not the story stuff. Story stuff's cool, but like the the character interaction. Um, again, it's a lot more uh, nice. Of the Old Republic too. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just. I'm sort of having to adjust because I've been playing all this console stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's a little bit slower paced and you have to be a little bit more deliberate. Mm-hmm. And even, well, my clock says I'm 30 hours in, but that's not accurate because sometimes, and this goes for everything, so just take this into account when you look at any of my game time. A lot of times I will pause the game and go upstairs and then I eat dinner and blah. So <laughs> four hours will pass okay. and it goes That actually explains clock. a lot about your. Yeah, your Raptor yeah. Uh, Mass Effect yeah. time. Don't don't pay attention to my Raptor. Well, Mass Effect might be accurate, but other games where it's like, you have 117 hours. I don't have 117 hours. I have 25 hours, and I've got a lot of... I went upstairs and got distracted. <laughs> um, overall, though, uh, you know, 
it, it's cool. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I finally kind of got past. I feel like there's a very steep ascent in a lot of RPGs to the your comp your your characters are competent level. Mm-hmm. Um, I finally got over that hump where you know, except for bosses, I can kind of handle people. Um, and all the DLCs out. Which is yeah. nice. Yeah. You know, it, it's kind of a nice thing to go back and it play. It is a game complete you know, package played. now. Yeah, everything's done. There's a lot to it, too. So, um, I was kind of curious because you're, you're looking at BioWare's timeline just for our um, comparison sake here. Mass Effect, Mass Effect came out November tw- 2007, Mass Effect 1. Yeah. Dragon Age Origins, November 2009. Except Dragon Age Origins is essentially a spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate. Yes. And then um, Mass Effect 2 was January 2010. So I just, I'm throwing those dates Almost out. Almost immediately after then. Yeah. I mean, Cause they must have had two very disparate teams working on them. I think I so. Mean, to, to, but there, there's so many just, similarities to how the dialogue works in Mass Effect 1 and Dragon Age Origins that I feel like... You know, they sped things up for Mass Effect 2, and I, it doesn't look like they had time to apply their Mass Effect lessons to Dragon Age Origins is all I'm really getting at. Because they're, they actually, they're very similar games to me, as far as um, one's in space and one's medieval. Like, <laughs> um, but I remember, um, I I haven't really, I never really got into Baldur's Gate, never got much into the, uh, the Dungeons and Dragons PC RPGs, not um, because I didn't enjoy it's the game. they but weren't the, good. So I mean, Neverwinter Nights. I enjoyed pieces of that, like that that type of stuff. Um, but I, there was always something holding me back. And um, when I finally dived into Origins, um, I think I sunk about twenty or thirty hours into it. And Gifford just left. No, um, no, I'm still here. <laughs> it's been twenty or thirty hours uh, into the game, and I think my understanding of Mass Effect and kind of where I thought that series was going at the time. Uh, made me really interested in Dragon Age because I was like, I want to see them play this out here too. And then uh, we were talking a little bit about like, you're like, you know, maybe I'll get a Dragon Age two and see if that had that like similar evolution. But it sounds like right. they, they took kind of a, a right hand <laughs> turn with Dragon Age two, um, which is which is unfortunate because I think because that, you just said don't get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, Origins has a lot of promise and establishes a really cool cool world, and uh, hopefully. Um, Inquisition, the third game, kind of rest- restores that a bit. But like, I loved what I played of Origins. There were a couple like big storyline moments that I I really enjoyed. One involving um, kind of a, a very dark child, um, uh, dark as an evil, uh, not as in race. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, the no, I really I really like that game. I should have put more time into it. So I hope you stick yeah, with it. I mean, the, uh, I I am enjoying it. Um... I, I'm kind of disappointed. I can't romance the uh, old lady mage because, you know. But uh, also, um, I was since to, you mentioned, uh, I was gonna say I always wanted to be around those conversations, those those whiteboard sessions where they they decide who you can and can't romance. Like I think some... everybody except the everybody except the dog <laughs> should be. Should oh, be and by play. the way. That, that is my that that was my selling point on this. I was like, "Wait, you have a dog, a war dog? <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, his name is Hawk." <laughs> and for the record, let's see. What are they doing? Uh, what are the puppies Hawk. doing? Oh, they're sleeping. There's Hawk. Hi, Hawk. Susan. Susan is totally out. I'm pretty sure. Uh, isn't the main character from Dragon Age Two named second. Hawk? I believe. I think. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, he is. Don't tell my dog that. He'll get, you know. <laughs> really, he'll get defensive about. <laughs> what defensive? No, he'll probably get a big head. We don't want oh. that. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, let's see. Let's go to games of the week from from the community. Let's. Michael Dean um, has been playing Might and Magazine. Is it? Uh, might, Ma- Might and Magic X Legacy. It's either that or Ten Legacy. I, I don't know. This game was a Gen Con. It looked pretty cool. <laughs> it just, Might uh, and Magic X. So wait, this isn't Heroes. This is the older school RPG style. I think so. But look, yeah, look like very dungeon crawler, like first person dungeon crawler. If I rem- if I'm thinking of the right game. So 
I remember the graphics being impressive. There were three Might and Magic games at Gen Con. They all look graphically impressive, and uh, I think this is the more action-oriented one. But uh, I have I need to uh, follow up on some reviews now that that game's out. Yeah, the the, the if you add the heroes part to the Might and Magic games, mm-hmm. their uh, turn-based strategy. The um, my brother still argues that Might Heroes and Might and Magic Two is one of the best video games ever made. Um, also, I'm hearing a bit of echo. Like I can hear my voice when I talk. I don't know if you tweaked anything. Don't worry uh, about it. If... I, I didn't, but uh, right. I can... Let's keep rolling. Um, also from chat. Oh, Aaron teased me. He almost put World of Warcraft as his uh, game of the week, but no, he's been playing Bioshock 2 and um, Minerva's Den, uh, that expansion. So, Did you play Bioshock 2? Uh, yes, I did. Did you play Minerva's Den? It did you was... play the DLC? I, I did not. I, I, apparently, that was the game that it should have been. Yeah, I'm like that's going starting to go down as like one of the best DLC offerings of this generation. So it's kind of getting a little mystique yeah. to it. Um, yeah, I, I'm guessing your echo is coming from the fact that I'm wearing open cans okay. and have a good mic. All right, let's speak. So identifying the problem is, uh, is is first step. So. Yeah, um, but no, I, I didn't. Uh, heard great things about it, and uh, I think I probably experienced the same letdown uh, after playing Bioshock to Bioshock Two that everybody did. Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't... if it hadn't, if it hadn't followed up by, if it had been the first series in the title, I'd be like, yeah, it was a solid first person oh, yeah. game, blah blah blah. But it followed up Bioshock, so whoops. Didn't you end up picking up Inf- Infinite here recently? Or were you just... I it? have not. Okay. I, eh, as I said, I'm spreading out my gaming budget. Yep, I understand. Maybe next month. Um, in my game of the week is... Uh, first, I want to give a shout-out to Escape Goat is now out on Steam. That is one of my favorite indie games. Um, we interviewed Ian Stalker, the, the developer of that, back when it came out on Xbox Live Indie Games, and it's just made its way up, up the ranks. Good to see it on Steam. Greenlight success, but um, as far as games I've played, game of the week was Payday Two. We had another uh, multiplayer session of that on Tuesday, and um, getting in a little bit deeper, we tried um, um, one of the like multi-day heists. In this, uh, up to this point, we were just doing one-off, one-off heists where you got like there's one in the jewelry store. There's the go to the mall and destroy as many things as possible, like just cause a bunch of damage. Uh, what are the other missions we did? Uh, there's the basically hold up four stores on this corner of of the street and like steal all their money and basically like every heist becomes sneak in, stay stealth as long as you can, and then begin to like hack a safe to to steal like whatever the big payoff is and and hold off the cops while you're uh, while all this is happening and inevitably you screw up like almost immediately and it becomes uh, chaotic and hilarious but. We did one of the um, multi-staged heists, which were, was really cool. It was uh, um, three. It was three days. Day one was we snuck into an airport, uh, or and and had to. Uh, we had the choice to destroy crates of weapons or bring them with us. So wait, is is this real time? Like you had spread out over three days, or? Uh, no, it's just like, th- it's three missions back to back to back, but you don't get paid until you get through the third mission. Um, gotcha. so, yeah. So day one, stage one was, um, secure, destroy these weapons. Um, stage two was break into like some FBI headquarters and hack a bunch of stuff. I don't remember what we stole there, but we stole stuff from the FBI. And so that was, we had to be sneaky there. And then we got all the way through day three which was break into a bank, like break into the vault, and then burn all the money in the vault, which I just thought was a fantastic uh, idea. <laughs> and uh, we burn all the money, but we got killed on our way out of the bank. We, like we li- like literally the final step. So we got nothing for that for those three missions, which took you know a good forty minutes. So, uh, but that game is fun, man. That is, I mean, you can compare it a lot to Left 4 Dead. That it's you know it's multiplayer required. Play with your buddies. Um, you know, the zombies have guns in this case, they're the cops and they just kind of keep coming at you wave after wave. And, um, while I still struggle with knowing the motivation of our characters to know why, like, dude, I am just gunning down cops 
I like this. These are terrible people. Um, so I'm still looking to figure out what that, if there's any like lining of redemption there. But it 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 plays it's, really it's, well. You're in the matrix. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just that'll be fine. That'll be fine. But I just after yeah, a while, there you go. There's your motivation. Headshotting the twenty ninth cop in a row. It's it just like, oh, why am I doing this? Like, uh, but uh, it's oh man, it's it's a lot of fun. I actually um, thought when Monaco came out that that was going to be like my, my heist game of the year, but uh, Payday Two, um, at least until they put the heist stuff in multiplayer for Grand Theft Auto Five, is the heist game of the year. But I recommend checking this out. It's all out on every platform, and get some bros and play some Payday. Uh, what, what what's it look like on uh, Xbox 360? Is this a full full price game? I believe it. I want to say twenty nine ninety nine. Let's see. Right. Payday two. Oh yeah, I guess I have Google at my fingertips. Yeah, or I'm not afraid to look stuff up during this show. Thirty nine ninety nine. So I knew <laughs> it wasn't full price. So yeah, it's forty forty bucks. Um, right. it, it actually, I'm still curious as to why it it isn't a free to play game because it has a lot of similar tropes, but. Um, but it but it doesn't have any micro tra- transactions in the game either. So you do level everything up, and you there's different builds for your characters, and you know unlock guns and masks and armor and all that stuff. So a uh, plenty of reason to to keep you keep you playing if you get into it. Well, as long as there's no micro transactions, because uh, as opposed to every other budgeting thing, there are micro transactions. Uh, any like any control over spending I have goes out the door. I would rather not discuss the amount of money I plowed into microtransactions for Mass Effect 3's multiplayer. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just I don't want to we talk about it. talking about that the other day with Jordan um, from chat. We uh, Just about how much money EA's probably has made off of that Mass Effect multiplayer. It's ridiculous. Um, but real quick, uh, Horrible Night highlights. You, you did a big run through of our archives to Update some of our copy, make our grammar look like we know what we're doing. Um, what what stood out to you? Uh, well, it, actually, it was something where I didn't have to correct any grammar because it was a video. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> Ethan did a playthrough, a stream, which uh, it's sort of like podcasts, unless I'm in the right mindset, like mowing the lawn mm-hmm. or on a long car trip. I I can't do it. I music absolutely, but I need to focus. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, with the reading and gaming, blah blah blah, the the free time is limited. Uh, but I just sort of turned this on and had it kind of like in a small way that I could watch while I was uh, what the hell was I doing? I was doing something that was mindless, but w- took a long time. Uh, and I'm sort of watching this out of the corner of my his uh, stream of Ragdoll Achievement 2. The article is called Ragdoll Achievement 2 is a family-friendly torture simulator. <laughs> and it's so bizarre, and it's so funny. I, the, they're crash test dummies that you're just trying to do as much damage to as possible and get these little micro-achievements. Uh, it's free to play on Armor Games, and it was... It was so weird... And it was so funny, <laughs> and Ethan got so excited. Yeah, like I'm just gonna put 75 saw bl- or like uh, buzz saw blades here, and we'll just get this achievement. <laughs> I I don't know. It was it was funny and it was entertaining, and it just cracked me up. I think he's gonna try to do uh, there's, there's... more videos for the cheap, cheap and dirty games, which have basically just become him playing his a random browser game of the week, and he has found some really some really bizarre shit out there, and uh, um, I think it's uh, it's a it's a nice break from some of our other more serious content, like you know finding AAA games or even like you know the indie game of the week. But going out to the browser yeah. games, and he, you know, he's he's been a huge Newgrounds fan for life, and uh, that he still kind of frequents that site and 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 is pretty active in that community. He's still uh, still kind of cool. I I, I couldn't. I couldn't stop watching, uh, and I had to. I had to actively avoid clicking on the link to this game because I was like, if I touch this game, I'm going to be playing video games at work. <laughs> That's bad, and I will play this all day. Uh, it, it, <laughs> so I just had to, uh, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure if I could. Um, 
you know, find a way for that to be research for your job. Like sometimes, like we we do some game development at our office. That's you know, playing games. We, I mean, we have our, our weekly arcade challenge in the office. It's a, a little bit different, but uh, yeah, I don't know if that'll that would work for you. Um, I'll, I want to give another shout out to Ethan. He wrote a taking offense article uh, called "Flying Enemies Can Kiss My Ass." <laughs> uh, <laughs> posted that this week and i don't know he he referenced uh the just a moment from the original ninja gaiden of the damn birds in that game knocking them off of platforms and um just talking about how you know they used to just be the worst enemies and just so difficult to get past and and they've now evolved into modern day they're just annoying like the racks from um borderlands was his example but um i don't know this kind of just we've been so focused on like game coverage on the site we've been doing a lot more review type of uh, articles that uh, it was nice to go back to the, the the creative silliness that kind of we founded the site on and so i was ex- one excited to see that and then i was laughing the entire time because well, birds suck in video games they also they, they really do and they've got hollow bones and <laughs> they're just little bitches they got that little dinosaur movement and they taste delicious Fuck birds. Fuck birds. Fuck Jason. And fuck jungles. That was the quote that came out during our lawn mowing segment. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Worst of the week in gaming. I'll start us off. Beyond Two Souls, and um, I'm saying this just based on the reviews that are out there. I had kind of hoped that uh, this would have been the breakthrough game for David Cage and his team. They've done a lot. They did a lot of interesting stuff with um, Hard Rain and before that Indigo Prophecy with you know just making more engrossing interactive stories and the you know the technology behind the motion capture and 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 acting like the facial capture that they put into this game to put Juno into <laughs> Beyond Two Souls to put Ellen Page in I I hope I I well, really um, hoped that the Lieutenant, game Lieutenant Elias yeah <laughs> the uh, I hope that the game would have lived up to the visual, visuals and it just sounds like it's kind of as flat as everything else they've done um, and I'm not, like, I've heard it interactive movie. Yeah, yeah. They said even it's like you, you, you're essentially just like pushing forward on the on the stick, and it just guides you along this movie. Which, um, you know, which I don't think if you know that going into it, I think it'll be fine. Um, I think like I I want to watch watch some of this game be played, but I, I don't really have an interest in, interest in playing it myself because. The, the graphics. Until are... somebody does a perfect playthrough, yeah. on, and then watch it on YouTube. And maybe, yeah, and maybe skim it because I just really just want to see some of the, you know, the more dramatic scenes in the acting. But they said the writing is just flat. The story is boring and confusing, and you know, um, and I'll quote it again. But basically, that you can tell that David Cage wants to be a, a movie director, but there's a reason no one's let him do that. So, um, you know, they've got another big. They've been part of the big tech demos for PlayStation 4, um, and so they're, they're continuing to um, perfect their technology, but they need to get a, get somebody that can actually control the story and the gameplay to make this um, something more than its niche audience should pay attention to. Let Bioware buy them? <laughs> Possibly. Like, yeah, I mean, if he was just... I... Use his technology in some, in, in some of the dialogue scenes in their games that could work out yeah i mean i I know people got excited about heavy rain and hey it's sort of a new thing and i know we're not talking about heavy rain but uh they got excited about it because it was sort of a new approach to things but uh, i i can't get really excited about that i mean i can hit pause on the dvd like a variety of every time there's an action <laughs> scene to slow it down like that's not a freaking video game like it's not it's not an experience i'm gonna pay 60 dollars for and also you're not gonna sit through like well actually i don't know how long this is but i'm assuming you're not gonna sit through a six hour movie that is just a completely average you know what i mean now without peter jackson at the helm now. right <laughs> like you put peter thinking, jackson at the helm of this and you there's you know, gotta be uh, there's got to be parody videos of that of people just literally hitting pause or fast forward or or rewind and just like oh just, it's, I'm playing the the new um, David Cage game I forget the name of it, of his company but um um but yeah it's, it was just too bad I had I had high hopes for it I hoped it would break through and it sounds like you know if you like if you liked Heavy Rain you should probably check this out 
but it doesn't sound like it 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 made it was a breakthrough in any any fashion so well uh according to our chat apparently ellen page's butt looked pretty good hey <laughs> or, 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 as Aaron, or as Aaron says, her butt cap. <laughs> no, I was just, I was just thinking of all the, oh, that was well played. All the, uh, all the, all the pins, all the tracking pins that they put on their face. I don't know what scene they're talking about, but I wonder if, how many uh, tracking pins her butt got. So, I don't know. also I, Willem Dafoe. So, directed. So. Oh wait, Willem Dafoe's ass. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, worst of the week from chats and we'll start with Dean um, Ivan Drago um, everyone's uh, favorite uh, Rocky character has apparently died uh, during his XCOM campaign so uh, fare thee well Ivan Drago um, sorry, to, sorry to see you go <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, one of my cousins he saw that movie even before I did and we watched it again because he was so excited he uh, was like yeah, Rocky fights steroid. That that was that was his name for Ivan. <laughs> steroid. Drago. That's, what, that's steroid. That's awesome. Um, Aaron's worst of the week calling out um, Sony and and Foxconn. Is that the manufacturer name? Yeah. Foxconn. Oh Jesus. Uh, yeah, apparently that, they're that, using the suicide capital for Apple. Um, found out that same un, company unpaid interns and college kids are working on. Uh, building the ps4 so um yeah i just and engineering students gluing pieces of plastic together <laughs> uh on overtime and if they didn't do it they uh, got their internship cut short and uh didn't receive the six credit hours oh, really so uh foxconn yeah right up there with the other paragons of uh treating your employees well yeah <sighs> uh, anyway what was your worst of the week Oh God! Uh, my worst of the week. It just more horrible set. Like, I'm gonna preface this statement with: when WikiLeaks first happened, I thought, you know, these guys are wrong. They're screwing this up. Like, I sort of, I sort of get where they're coming from, but they're wrong. Every time the NSA opens its fucking mouth, I'm like, no, these guys were right. Snowden. You should get the freaking Congressional Medal of Freedom. Like, Jesus. So, preface out of the way, uh, the uh, NSA head said, we need CISPA, which was the uh, second attempt, uh, SOPA and uh, PIPA from uh, 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 roughly a year ago. They tried to do CISPA, which was functionally similar, and it's a horrible law. And uh, it essentially grants corporations immunity from warrantless wiretap from uh, the NSA on American citizens for their digital activities. Um, It's terrible. The House passed their version of it. The Senate said they're not going to take it up, but apparently they've been uh, quietly working on their own own version of it. Um, So uh, I guess if you're listening to this podcast and – you got excited because I was guesting on it. Uh, I I hi, promise mom. I will. <laughs> yeah, hi mom. Uh, I I will keep you up to date on this. Uh, it will definitely get an article, yeah. and I'll be obnoxious on social media. Uh, this is this is horrible law, not just for online freedoms, but this ex- this extends into the gaming realm. Yeah, this means somebody might be looking at your purchases. Uh, to, to find out whether you're affiliated with uh, terrorist training because, you know, uh, Call of Duty, uh, what are we on, 17? Yeah. Um, it is a terrorist training game. Um, this, hmm. this is bad stuff. And it, I, from my understanding of the law, um, not just that law, but sort of all law, it... Um, Without being reactionary, I, I think it uh, undermines some of our fundamental freedoms. I look forward to yeah, keep keep me posted on the whatever the Senate's up up to there. I know about CISPA, but kind of you know it looked like it was going to hit some of the same dead ends that SOPA did. But uh, ugh, if both sides are actually working on something, um, it, it people need to know more about it. So, uh, 
So that was also kind of interesting because we've seen your reactionary articles, but you you know, I think you you kept your you kept your cool for the the, the live conversation. So because I know. I, I know you can. I know I get reactionary, but I, I know this could be a two-hour podcast in there. I know this could be a two-hour podcast where I don't get to say anything, and <laughs> so um, that could happen. <laughs> that, that that was something catching on fire, wasn't it? That, that's what that sound was. That was a giant fireball. Uh... <laughs> All right, best of the week from chat. Um, let's see, D- Dean. Um... <laughs> His best week was everything that Ivan Drago did prior to dying hor- horribly. So, <laughs> at least he uh, went out of his way. And Nilmar, uh, we'll give you a shout out too, um, because he just bought his uh, gaming PC uh, today, actually. So, been talking about that for a while. Congratulations. Um, might even see you streaming uh, with some of the Horrible Night crew here soon. So, I think it gets delivered at 10 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> He's. He said, I shit you not, he sent me a message, and I was like, so should I set my alarm for 4 a.m. <laughs> Eastern? Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for him. Um, Aaron's best of the week. Uh, Saints Row 4 run out some of their DLC. Um, some of it's coming later this month, but also he was more or less giving the shout-out to um, the upcoming DLC coming later in the year called hey, How the Saints Save Christmas. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> How did I miss that? Um, oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to like watch uh, Harold and Kumar, uh, whatever the Christmas movie was, and then play How the Saints Save Christmas, uh, right back to back. That's yeah. gonna be perfect. It um, I, yeah, I was I had completely forgot about their their DLC, but their the first one to come out is the Enter the Dominatrix. That's really hard to say. Um, <laughs> DLC, which I actually thought was incorporated into Saints Row 4. I almost assumed that's what we were kind of playing. But uh nope, there's a there's a different version of that program as well. So we'll get to see that later this month. More gimp, oh. more gimps and prostitutes if I had to guess. Um so on my gaming schedule mm-hmm. everything just got pushed back like two weeks. <laughs> so hey, there's a, that's a I like that balance of Dragon Age Origins and Saints Row. I think that work that works out quite well. <laughs> Um, okay, I'll, I'll, my best of the week, um, first a shout out, there's a big, big Capcom sale, Capcom sale going on on Steam right now, I picked up a handful of games, and, uh, um, you know, I don't really know where Capcom's going from here on out, but they, uh, they still have a pretty fun little library there, I was excited to get, um, Bionic Commando, Commando Rearmed, the 2D, uh, the first 2D game, um, on my PC now, so... And uh, but my big shout out goes to one of my favorite games of this generation, Enslaved Odyssey to the West is finally coming to P- PC later this month. Um, it uh, if you haven't played it, great character action game, and that is one of your favorite games. Yeah, yeah. Cole loaned it to me before he moved. Mm-hmm. It's still in my cabinet, and I haven't touched it. You should touch it, like nicely. That's a little creepy, but nicely. okay. Nicely touched. There's good bow bow fighting in that game. Great story, um, cool motion capture. Uh, they do a bunch of motion capture performance pieces. Uh, that's made by Ninja Theory, uh, which um, has one of my Game of the Year candidates. They did the DMC Devil May Cry remake this year. Um, and did Andy Circus do yes. that? Yeah, no, Andy Circus is name? in okay. it. Like there is a video of Andy Circus as a character in the game and. He also motion captured and voiced the main character of the game. So, um, but yeah, just, right, well. just a great character action game, great story, um, really cool cooperative gameplay uh, with with the computer. Like you have a companion character that has some pretty cool abilities to help you out, and you're fighting robots in post apocalyptic post apocalyptic future. And then um, I believe it also includes uh, it had some pretty pretty great DLC to that game as well. So. If you haven't played it, uh, give it another shot when it comes out later this month. But Gifford, take us home with your best of the week. Oh man, my best of the week. Uh, yeah, I know you touched on sort of a, a uh, interactive movie thing, but Telltale has a new game out, uh, The Wolf Among Us, which I'm pretty psyched about. Uh, um, it's <laughs> It's based on Fable, not... I, I think it's Fable is the comic that it's based on. Um, 
where basically all of the fairy tales are real and they sort of hide from normal society. Um, I loved the shit out of their Walking Dead. Um, I actually have never finished it because I, I'm afraid to see what happens to Clementine. Um, <laughs> but I know, I know. Mm. I just I'm having trouble finishing it. I couldn't. I, I, I couldn't sleep that night. Like a lot. Yeah, of I know. I know something. I was a different person. It's gonna make me see it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so they've got a new game coming out. Uh, it is a prequel to the comics, um, and it, it, you know, it's up there, sort of unique style of art, which I think they've kind of been... They've improved? Establishing, <laughs> like, well, yeah, they've improved it, but I think they've been establishing it mm-hmm. since Psychonauts. No, I mean, they did such like, a I great job they, of, uh, no, did you say Psychonauts? Yeah. <laughs> Telltale. Don't I mean Psychonauts? No, tell no. That's double fine. But Telltale has. Oh. But anyway, they've like the they have perfected their graphic novel art style. Um, yeah, they just from the pictures I've seen, it it looks awesome. Um, it looks. I mean, it looks like HD. Uh, it sounds sounds HD optimized The Walking Dead. Like it looks like they took the walk what they would do with The Walking Dead, but it's like a little bit more exaggerated. And it's like colors, and it's like the edges of the characters, but it looks fantastic. So yeah, I, I'm excited to play it. And uh, now I'm having this sort of dichotomy in my head with Eltel and Double Fine going. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It, and then there's also Traveler's Tales. So the guys that do the Lego games, I always confuse those guys and Telltale. But I mean, I know I know them all apart. It's just like their art style sort of has something in common. Sure. Um, and it's it's thrown me a little bit of a loop. I wouldn't mind if they, if Double Fine did the gameplay for some of Telltale's stu- like stories. That would be cool. Anyway, that's a that's a, that is a game pitch for another show. Um, <laughs> uh, be- before we get out of here, my random question of the week to you, um, Mr. Dragon Age Origins, Mr. Mass Effect. Um, knowing that um, <laughs> Bioware is out there working on stuff, what do you want them to do next? Oh, God. See, I was all prepared for all kinds of things, but asking me what my favorite developer slash publisher should take on next. Uh, um, <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad... Honestly, what I would really love for them to do is either buy the rights to uh, the Dresden Files or the Iron Druid. They're a uh, series of books that I read. I they both- sound like books. They're books. Okay. Uh, they're they're funny urban fantasy okay. with wizards and uh, smart ass. Basically, if Han Solo had the Force, um, that that pretty much sums up who both these characters are. Mm-hmm. Um, I I would love to see Bioware get their hands on one of those franchises. You'd have to actually see like, that, I, like see them take on some pre existing a pre existing work. Yeah, partly because, uh, or or maybe not take on the pre-existing work, but uh, expand the universe. Um, there's a shitload of characters. Uh, go to town. Um, th- there's a guy who's a knight of the cross whose whose sword has one of the nails from uh, Jesus' crucifixion worked into it. So, like, his sword is Excalibur. Cool. Uh so there's a whole backstory for him. There's it, it's uh, same thing with the Iron Druid. You know he's a, a two thousand year old druid. Uh, he's the only one left, um, and he's trying to avoid uh, all of the uh, the hierarchy from basically the Irish, the Celtic mythology. But he also pisses off everybody else and kills mm-hmm. Thor because Thor's a giant ass hat. Uh, his words, not mine. Uh, so, you know, either one of those, they've got some rich mythology. I'd love to see Bioware get their hands on that, yeah. just because they do such a good job with backstory and uh, the the codex, um, the the overall mythology. I, I think it'd be fun to see them get cool. their hands on literary pol- or literary property that's got a bunch of backstory and just say, hey, go to town. I mean, I, kind, I I'm kind of optimistic for what they're doing with Dragon Age. With Inquisition, I hope that they kind of blow that out. I would love to see them just like, just kind of really focus and 
just ex- explode a, a fantasy franchise and really do what they want with it. Uh, beyond that, like mm-hmm. if I had to pick a new direction for them, I'd want to see if they could do something like modern day kind of spy related. Like I, like they've done sci-fi. what Alpha Protocol was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I was thinking like Alpha Protocol, something in between that and Deus Ex, and just like I want it to feel very modern day when you start, but there's like there's some other stuff going on in the world that they can tap into. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I feel like. Doing sci-fi, doing fantasy. Well, let's uh, let's come back to like a modern day, like make it make it feel a little bit grounded, and then you know take it out from there. So, uh, yeah, that's my random idea for Bioware. But and that's gonna do it for top video game podcast of the week. We're sure it was your best podcast of the week, and at least the best one with two Jasons on it. So, um, I think that's it for tonight's show. Gifford, thanks for jumping on, man. Hey, no problem. Chat, thanks always for the answers, and we will see you next week.